All right. Uh, hello, and welcome to uh, KCP Community Meeting, February first, twenty twenty-two. We have an agenda that I am not presenting for some reason, and let's start with that. I think uh, I think Andy beat me to the first item, which is scoping proposal. Uh, I'm going to defer and let you go first, please. Uh, almost got away with it. Uh, okay. Then in that case, the other thing I had was. Thank you to whoever added the, oh, uh, uh, Stefan, thank you. Um, the prototype two script that we are working toward. Um, do you, do we want to just go through this and, and sort of double check that this is what we want and make sure that everybody is on board with both what's in it and what's not in it? Does that sound good? Was yeah. This yeah. Why is this loading? It's because the link uh, has a sharing thing oh, in it. I see. Yes. Fix the link. We will get to it first. Be deleting the query command. There we go. Um, and for some reason, Rob is pinned. What? Your screen is pinned for me for some reason, and I'm not sure how that happened. I'm seeing the hmm. screen share. Okay, excellent. Uh, good. Uh, then it's just me. You can unpin him. Oh, okay. There we go. Anyway, sorry. It's been a long time since I've used a computer, I guess. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is the, this is the script. Um, I guess we'll just go through and see if we're all on board with it. Uh, we want to demonstrate the minimal kube API server. You can fork uh, code that we have and run it exactly like we're about to show for the rest of the the rest of the uh, demo. That's basically like there's no you know there's no cards up my sleeve. This is this is something you could also do uh, just using these commands. Uh, start with two kind clusters. I think kind's a good choice for uh, it's what we used the last time, and it's a, another good sort of like you don't need anything special to get started. Um, create these clusters with these. Uh, Andy, what's the ingress ready true? Oh, oh, oh for the ingress demo. Oh, it's it's mine. I oh. I added those as a suggestion on top of Andy's suggestion. So gotcha. basically, uh, I need I... to mark that right. note as ready for um, the ingress controller for the ingress demo later. OK, that seems good. Yeah. I'm going to accept both of these, I think. Yeah, I That's think it's, it's cool to accept, and we can adjust if anything's broken. Okay. So it's not. It's just a node label, so you could do it manually as well. To cut a patch if you connect to the kind. That's also. true. Okay. Do we Whatever you prefer, honestly. It's cleaner, perhaps, to make the patch. Just try if it works out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna accept this, and if we decide later to yeah. do something else, we can do that too. Um, I'm not gonna go through that right now. I think uh, I think we probably want this. Oh, thank you for your you're beating me to it. You're accepting all of these. Um, this is uh, also gonna demonstrate the uh, plugin. Is that um, is that looking good? I haven't played with the plugin at all, uh, but is it looking is it looking good? Well, it's managed. Uh, so I, I mean, it depends it's if whether here we want to make use of it because it's you know easier and that's not the main, uh, or if we want to use a raw um, kubectl create workspace. That's you know. I mean, I think it's I think it's kind of nice if it you know if it works. It's nice it to works, show yes. that we are also sure adding works. Yeah. you know nice I mean, uh, porcelain on top of the plumbing. Sure, sure, it, it works. It was demoed last week and, and merged. And maybe could you show one example to do it manually and afterwards just use a sure yeah approach. yeah e exactly. So I mean. It depends. It depends just in which demo we want to, to you know, focus on 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 the manual, uh, on what it 
means to to run that manually. Uh, I mean, I, I think I mean in in a number of demos we would switch uh, probably from uh, at least create one cluster. So I mean, yeah, I I can use the manual variant in any of the demos in the one we choose. I think that's I think that's a good idea. I think like the first time show here is what's actually happening. Here is here is the the raw stuff that's happening, and then you know in order to shorten this part of the demo in the future, we made a plugin that does it for you that is easier. Yeah, to the thing is but, that but, yeah, yes, sure. I mean the thing is that here, um, in fact, we have two two things. We have a kubectl create to create the workspace, and then a kubectl um, workspace use, which mainly uh, under the cover calls the kube config sub resource on the workspace endpoint. And then uh, you know merges uh, parts of this uh, cube config content into the current uh, um, the current cube config context, of course, to be able to use cube CTL uh, transparently afterwards. So I mean, uh, obviously, it's not just one line. It's it, it corresponds to pure cube CTL, but at least three yeah, calls. I think you don't have to script or anything. Maybe put it into a shell comment below, just the five lines you need. So not SED or anything like that. If you need something on this level, don't. I think, it's, I think it's useful though, to show, like, or to uh, maybe it's in text on the screen and maybe it's when the person is talking. But like, once again, we're not, this is not secret sauce. This is not doing yeah, something exactly. crazy. So, this I mean, is like just a, a shortcut for some context. You know, yeah, that, that, that's what I'm. That's why I'm saying that it's more about um, what I what is the focus that we want to to give to each demo. I mean, if we precisely have to run three commands and merge part of a con of of cube config into another one, then the focus of the demo becomes be, becomes much more on this. But I agree that maybe we can just run this and then have a comment. That explains yeah. that it's just not magic, just a shortcut for pure kubectl commands. Yeah, I think I think um, I don't know if there is also a like text voice script that goes along with this, but I, I, if we use if we use the uh, plugin, we should describe what it's doing because otherwise it's one of those like, look, yeah. I made a web server right. in one command. It's you know Python run a web server, and like there's a lot of stuff that happens back there that. It, you know, it's not just one command; it's a lot of stuff. But this isn't that. Yeah, this sure. is just like a little bit of you know. You can you can imagine what this does. Anyway, um, I don't want to hang too. Uh, yeah, Andy, go ahead. Uh, Clayton did add a comment that we should comment as we're going through this. So I think narrating is good, um, whether it's only vocal or also included in comments. Um, so I. In section four, I started adding comments that describe what's going on, and okay, may want to do the same elsewhere. Yeah, I will leave this open and come back to it later when uh, I'm not presenting. But that will be my bookmark to myself to add text. Um, create a deployment seems good, except that made that go away. Um, is there a hand? Yeah, okay. yes. um, could we use something different from nginx as a deployment yeah i, I mean i i put in a placeholder okay. so feel, feel free to change it to something else okay okay i will look for some kind of echo api you can use simple, um right? quardy kubernetes up and running okay. I'll, I'll send you a link okay thank you um, Good call. Uh, show that it's unschedulable. Create a location and expose it. Schedule or places the workload, sync or agent on the thing. This is, I guess we probably need these sorts of commands to be added to here, but I can do that uh, shortly after this. Um, stop the first kind cluster and show. Do we that. have locations? Cluster. Or are we just creating a, one cluster? Cluster. We don't have locations yet, I would say. They're mostly the same thing anyway, as we have learned, so that's fine. 
Okay. Maybe these should be edits instead of suggestions, but. Um, uh, and then, yeah, add, a, add an ingress to the deployment with a host name, traffic flows to whichever one. Does that sound good for this? For this flow? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, so about this, for the ingress to work, I need uh, basically to deploy a couple of controllers. Well, one envoy and the controller, and this should be done next to the KCP or, you know, so it's, it's where do we put that at the top? Yeah, I think around, I'm going to add you here. So those are different binaries from KCP, but I will add those next to the KCP start. And... Okay. Yeah. And I mean, again, like when we're, as we're going through it, it doesn't have to be very like, and stop while we describe what we're doing now, but just like, just uh, nothing up our sleeves. We're not running, you know, eight other services in the background that do all the magic for us. Um, and it's all something you could go run yourself if you were interested. Um, OK, uh, policy organizations and sharding show an org workspace. Is this all done? Again, I'm not up on the latest of what KCP is even doing these days. Um, it, org workspace and creation of a workspace, getting the ability to access to a workspace, create a controller that list watch across resources in all workspaces and does useful work. So I, I uh, would suggest we don't necessarily need to do 303 for creating a controller um, given, I mean, we have controllers that can do cross workspace stuff. And um, I think just the fact that KCP is running for right now is that. Um, and for 302, we're still debugging some RBAC issues uh with the way we have things set up so that that is valid for the demo but not working yet um, maybe 301 is this david david your workspace create yes i assume that workspace create by the way it's already used in in the first um demo but there it could be more interesting to show that then when you create a workspace it has been assigned to a shard and then you have a valid url that points to that shard um yeah. that point yeah it's important to note you feature. can't um you can't use the workspace plugin and the you run the use sub command and unless you have a shard <laughs> um i learned that the hard way do we have an organization yeah, sure. workspace yes, uh, sure yeah like configurable org workspaces or are we just dumping one. everything into admin we have yeah, one now, and, um, and yes, steve sir. your pr didn't add anything yet your proxy nope. pr <laughs> of course not yeah, but but now the admin is is the org. I mean, at least we could create the yeah. fact you, we could showcase the fact that we can assign a workspace. Um, I mean, create a workspace. It is assigned to a shard, and then if you have another shard, you can create a second workspace, and it might be assigned to a second shard if you remove the first shard, and you can see the result of this uh, in the list of the workspaces. And all I don't think we done, necessarily need. Like, because nothing helps you talk to workspaces across shards. Yeah. That's like, oh, cool, it moved. Now I need to go get the updated URL. That doesn't really flow as a good. Just a simple case create a workspace, move over. That's all we need here, right? And then 302 is the other control. Sharding, I would leave out mostly. So you're saying workspace okay. sharding is not a is not currently useful enough or or uxc enough to include in the demo that just, doesn't work there's no such thing just say just saying like so instead instead of showing that we should just say these things uh if we had multiple workspaces and multiple shards they would be and whatever plumbing to allow you to move them transparently to users this would be transparent 
by the way, what's, in the, this what's case, the goal what's... here? Because what we could do as well, like if the point of section three is to say, here's a controller doing work across workspaces. If we build the shard in the background and we only run one KCP, all of the workspaces get scheduled to that single shard and we can do a star lister to have one work or one controller doing something across all. So we can have multi workspace, but not multi shard. Is that the point of one of the points of demo three? Yeah, we didn't have workspaces in this, this is demo, this is prototype two. Sorry, I'm in section three. <laughs> yeah. So the original demos had only only had logical clusters and didn't have workspaces as a concept. So I think it's compelling and important to show we've added workspaces and we have our back once we get it working on the workspaces and we've got the vir personal virtual workspaces that um, we can demonstrate as well. We have API inheritance, which is section four. Um, so I think all of that is new and interesting for us to demo. Okay, so then maybe we should just remove sections 303 and 304 and 305, right? From what I heard you say, there was no, like the, the cool part was the, the interaction, the user doing this stuff, the, the RBAC. Yeah, I mean, given that sharding isn't ready for prime time, we don't have the the you know all of that implemented. I don't think it's uh, part of the prototype too. By the way, yes, cool. as you said, um, Andy, it's still based on the workspace controller and workspace shard controller. So we still have to create a shard, which yeah. mainly owns the URL of the represents a given KCP instance owns the base URL and drives the fact that, that that the URL is how the URL is built for a given workspace and then um, pass to the to to the client. So that can just be done before the demo. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I'm just wondering, yeah. might it maybe it might be interesting just to, uh, commenting the demo um, to showcase that we have um, first class concept for a KCP instance. Even if we don't show about moving, uh, you know, we don't show moving a, a cross chart, but at least we have a, um, a concept and, and, and a resource that clearly identifies a KCP instance that can be sharded in the future. So it seems to me that it's still a, a, quite a, an important step um, yeah. to what, what we showed last year. So I'm wondering where, uh, I don't want, that set up to happen before the demo. I want it to happen at the beginning of the demo. I put it to do. Yeah. That it's that it's put it to do in there because that's that's really straightforward. You know, currently, once you started KCP, just create the shard and and create a secret with the current cube config of KCP, and then everything works. You know, immediately. There's nothing to wait. So we could just have that be part of the demo if we want to to be complete and and provide the, the complete picture it seems to me. And we can sort of say and like verbally mention and not with a part in the in the code script, but verbally mention this is where sharding would take place when we have yeah, sharding well, exactly. where it will take place. And I think like I mean the only reason I had said to remove those three is because you know when I was listening to any like the stuff that he was talking about, like what is exciting here, it didn't actually include this cross workspace thing. Mm. If we do, like, I think if it's simple enough to have a controller that does a star lister, we have a shard, we do something, we, you know, do some controller across all of them. So, uh, that's not, it's not shotting. I think, I think what Steve is saying is there's two, there's two interesting things in here. And one of them is more interesting than the other one. One is cross workspace listing watching is very exciting, is is 80% of why part three is exciting. The other 20% is as an operator or as a user of our service that we operate, you care that it shards that is, you know, zero downtime or low downtime and that it scales. That's less exciting than like features. I mean, scaling and reliability and speed are features, but uh, it's less exciting than I can write a controller that runs across a bunch of 
seemingly clusters. Is that Steve, what you're saying that, that like sharding is less exciting and not there yet, so we can drop it? Partially, yeah. And I, I think as well, like, I, I'd like for there to be a clear understanding of like, so what? Oh, we showed uploading a cube config. So what? Like, that's not, I struggle to even think of what we would say. Like, that's not a compelling part of the demo. Like, oh, we're going to build something in the future. Great. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like, that's the other side. If if you show something which we know it's super incomplete and just duct tape, the promise sounds like we have something, but actually we don't. So I think yeah. we might be thinking about this like engineers and not like yeah. salespeople. Salespeople sell stuff that isn't built all the time. I, I don't yeah, think no, that's, I think that's fine. I just think we need to have a clear like strategy for what does this mean? Like, why are we showing this to someone? Like showing someone the fact that we have a shard scheduling controller isn't useful to the user like they don't care so right. translating that into some sort of like okay cool what's the thing i can do with this here's how and i would if, approach if that it. thing is cross workspace list then great here's how i would approach it so we start off and we're setting up the environment we show that you spin up kcp we show that you spin up the virtual workspaces server and then right after we do that we have to create a shard so we, we basically can say we're doing some additional setup work that is part of some stuff that's in progress that relates to scaling KCP beyond a single KCP instance. And that's why we're doing this, because it's work in progress. We're not going to talk about it anymore <laughs> unless we really want to. But it's not really saying we have this workspace shard scheduling controller and blah, blah, blah. It's just, we have to do this step because it's work in progress and we'll get, you know, we'll have a cool demo for it later. Yeah. That seems original. Agree. Let's move on. Uh, anything else on policy organizations and formally charting or, or we can move on to API inheritance, which is also not done yet. Uh, so we'll, we'll see, this will be fun. Um, Create a new source workspace and inherit. Does should this inherit from source? No. So that's why it says eventually. So what I want to demonstrate oh. is that you have two workspaces that are independent, not inheriting from anything. You go to the source workspace and install a CRD, and then you create an instance of that uh, custom resource in the source workspace. You show that it was created. Then you switch to the workspace that eventually will be inheriting and show that there's no CRDs, there's no cowboys. And then the part that I you know, haven't <laughs> finished yet is uh, I need to patch the workspace to um, I need to patch the workspace so that it does inherit. And I think that's gonna have to be a raw cube control command and not a KCD workspace command because I can't edit from there. <laughs> workspace to inherit. The alternative is to add a new sub command, right? Yeah, but timing. <laughs> we can do that later. And then yeah, so here, uh, not sure I implemented the patch um, and the patch uh, verb on the virtual workspace. The personal workspace is virtual workspace, but I check. I mean, if inheritance is something we expect to live on once we have API import and export, there could also just be cube control KCP workspace inherit, right? Yeah, I I think it'll probably go away. But um, you know, this the way we describe this is that we did some exploratory work to prove out that we could inject APIs into a workspace without them actually living there as CRDs in that workspace. And that mm -hmm. this is the this lays the groundwork for the API importing and exporting that we plan to do in the future that will be much more powerful than just inheriting some APIs from one single parent workspace. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. So this one's also 
this section is also a little weird because we're showing something both incomplete and deprecated basically right like this is this is uh this will work and we think we're going to do something better um i, I don't have any problems with like, that like yeah kcp is in like ongoing series of prototypes yeah. and we're showing an evolution of what we've developed and what we're what we, you know we're planning to do in the future so i, I think yeah. it's totally yeah. fair to say we added a feature we know it's not our desired end state it helped us prove out that we could do a lot of the plumbing that we needed and it's going to go away and be replaced by something more powerful i think like that's totally on point for how we're treating kcp yeah absolutely sorry i didn't mean it to sound like like uh we shouldn't demo this because it's going to go away like the, like you said the point of it is to show we learned we did it we showed it was possible we're going to do it and it doesn't go away only yeah. the ux ui goes away the yeah. thing will will be the basis of the future yeah yeah Okay. Yeah, so I, I will go in um, hopefully today and get the rest of this fleshed out. It, uh, when we patch that workspace to inherit, does it need to do anything else before? Like I imagine the next step is like, and now look, it has cowboys. And now when I change the cowboy type up here, it changes down. Like, you know, the magic trick is I change it in my left hand and it changes in my right hand. Is that uh, so what it'll show is that when you patch to inherit the, um, if you run the API resources command, you'll see cowboys. Um, so I'll, I'll add that stuff in there too. And um, you'll be able to do CRUD operations on cowboys in the inheriting workspace. And it's not gonna pull in any instances from the source workspace. It just gives you access to the API. Yeah, and then I think, uh... That is also even a good segue to like, uh, but there's something even more powerful coming down, coming down the the conveyor belt, which is like, mm -hmm. you know, complex import export uh, relationships. Okay, um, is that everything we have? Is there anybody sitting on anything else that they wanted to add? Okay. Awesome. I think I think that's a prototype, a demo. Um, all right, I'm going to go back to here. Um, Andy, did you want to talk about your item now that I'm done preempting you, or do you want to talk about namespace scheduler versus the other two? I can wait. OK. Uh, all right, we had some discussion in Slack about, I, I guess I would say that the current state of the namespace scheduler and the current state of deployment splitter and ingress controller sort of fight. Uh, and we should, I think, well, deployment splitter can just go away over time. Like, I don't think it's even like part of our current active uh, path toward where we want to be. I think namespace scheduler is more like that. But the question I have is, should ingress controller continue to exist the way it is existing and namespace scheduler should get off of its lawn or do we want to somehow ideas welcome figure out how ingress controllers work should cooperate with namespace scheduler um andy go ahead uh so i, I had a thought yesterday which i think could would be a simple fix um i don't know if it's a band-aid or like an acceptable long-term solution, but we could add an annotation to a resource that basically tells the namespace scheduler, don't touch me. So you could create an ingress and put on the annotation that says, I'm a root, don't touch me. And then the namespace scheduler wouldn't assign it to a P cluster. The, uh, that's per resource, not per type, right? Yeah, yes, per instance. Is there a race there if somebody, because a, a user is just going to say, like, you know, create ingress who they might not annotate it with, and I'm the root? The, the controller for the ingress would say, like, oh, you look like a root. I'll apply that and then create your children. But in the meantime, the namespace scheduler might try to do something with it, too. 
yeah, the the burden would be on the user to avoid the race, which is not necessarily ideal. Um, so they would have we, to um, appropriately. Super quickly outline the debate for someone who wasn't involved in the slide. Oh yeah, so um, when Kyle and Chris were working on the um, E to E tests in the pull request that's doing the namespace mapping, so like if you have two workspaces that both have the default namespace and they're sharing a single physical cluster as a target, then uh, we have this PR that says, OK, default in workspace one, when it lands on your cluster, is not actually default. It's like workspace one default, which eventually will switch to a hash. But uh, what ends up happening is the ingress controller uh, expects that the root ingress, the one that's supposed to live only in KCP, never gets a label on it assigning it to a cluster because the ingress controller creates uh, leaf ingresses that do get the label on so that there's one per uh, physical cluster. The namespace scheduler, on the other hand, says, I'm going to assign each namespace to a random physical cluster. And then anything that gets created in that namespace is also going to go to that same physical cluster. So the namespace scheduler takes a root ingress and assigns it to a physical cluster by labeling it when the ingress controller does not want it to be labeled and assigned to a physical cluster. What um, is there one root ingress per logical cluster? Who creates it? So if it, this would be a user creating an ingress, saying, for my app or service, here's an ingress for it. But why does the namespace controller touch ingress? Because it would sync that? Because it's in a like namespace. Synchro would... I think the, the namespace controller is maybe it takes everything in a namespace and it moves it together to a physical cluster. Yeah. yeah. This this goes to, I think, uh, a long debate we had about how all of this should work in general, right? The, the deployment splitter was a, a demo for the general concept of this, but I think we had a lot of conversations about how it shouldn't be creating, it shouldn't be creating new leaf resources or children resources. The sinker should see the root, see the actual thing being scheduled to the P cluster, and then say, I know that I'm not supposed to just create an ingress here. I'm supposed to do some subset of that and coordinate, you know, both both figure out what that is for this type and generalize it across all types. Um, Since that it, it's quite related to the two steps syncing um, proposal that that I've done some weeks ago. Of course, it was really you know a sort of dummy implementation. But the the principle the the ideas behind that was really to separate uh, scheduling from transforming objects with possibly adding new objects, for example, ingress leaps, and uh, the last part would be, you know, completely transparent uh, syncing, completely systematic syncing. So this was one approach. It seems to me that um, maybe the the more um, current approach to that is something that uh, Clayton also mentioned in, I think, the transparent multi-cluster uh, document about syncing strategies per type of objects. And maybe also this relates to uh, virtual workspaces, um, because when we <clears throat> uh, go um, for, to, I mean, towards future syncing implementation, <clears throat> we would have possibly, at least it's one option, a uh, virtual workspace that would gather uh, all the you know all the resources that are have to be visible by a given sinker and then when doing that uh, it could be possible in the virtual workspace whose uh, goal is typically to you know uh, add some logic on on resource gathering resource retrieval then such a virtual workspace could be enhanced to provide on the slide transformation on on the resources it exposes to the sinker. So I mean it seems to me that it's it's related to to those you know exploration uh, points. But the main thing is do we decide to somehow segment or separate pure syncing from transformation from scheduling? Does it make sense? Yeah, I think there's also a near-term and long-term question in there. Yeah. I think for near-term, 
we can just have the namespace scheduler ignore ingresses or you know take a take a list of things it does or doesn't care about for the you know immediate next I, step i would I prefer think, something like that a very small exception rather than a generic mechanism yeah i think in the fullness of time and by the time this is this is more mature we should have a better general solution which might be the the two phase syncing or the transformer that puts it into uh, uh, that makes available something in a virtual workspace the the issue with deployment splitter and the root the root leaf uh, uh, transformation is the same I think as the two phase uh, yeah, yeah. Speaking problem where we don't want one if, if one ingress is scheduled to 100 physical clusters we don't want to have 101 objects in etcd for that we want to have one object that gets like seen differently by certain sinkers or seen in the normal way by a sinker and knows what that means for itself but i don't think we've come anywhere close to solving that problem in a general or even specific to ingress way so uh i think that that's an open area for exploration in the future just to be clear that like not creating all those leaf resources isn't like a slam dunk if only because sinking of all those resources and the status of all those resources can't be encapsulated in a single resource you have to have a way of communicating status both for like mechanically verifying the system but also enabling users to see what's going on so we have to figure out a channel for that maybe it's not you know explicit resources but putting it all in one resource might be a bit heavy yeah yeah i mean uh in the in the worst case, it trades one problem for another, which is instead of having 101 objects being stored and updated, we have one object that's updated 100 times per update, right? Which is which is just a different dimension of problem. Um, and you'll, so yeah. you'll run out of space eventually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but then it becomes mainly, I mean, if we have something like uh, in the future, a virtual workspace that just presents this as distinct resources to the sinker, I mean, as typical cube resources, the whole question then becomes, where do we store the, you know, internal statuses? Where, where do we store the, the the additional transformed information and send back information that should not be seen by the external KCP clients? It, it becomes a, a sort of storage uh, question as soon as we have a, a virtual workspace layer that would present things. And I also think like there's a big question about how do you have a consistent list watch across, God forbid, virtual workspace upgrade that changes how it presents things. Yeah. Like, I think I, that I, might be a I, bit of a tangled mess. I wonder, should we, Jason, should we move that into a doc discussion? There are so many angles. It's not trivial. And yes. Yeah. The scoping topic is something we need now. So maybe it's better for, for today. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I agree. I don't think any of us have any, even a, a third each of the answer, and there are just more problems the longer we talk about it. So, uh, yeah, I will. I can. We can table it for now. I think short term, uh, we can have this namespace scheduler just ignore an ingress, or in general, take a list of things we ignore, and that list defaults to ingress. Uh, but I will feel bad about it. Um, until we figure that, out what we're doing. Is that something that needs to go in ahead of the demo? Uh, yeah, I think so, because the because currently it sounds like the namespace scheduler and the ingress controller that we plan to have both running for the demo will yeah. fight. Uh, um, luckily, it's an easy fix on the namespace scheduler side. Um, so yeah, and, and I will uh, create a doc and welcome your contributions to poke holes in the many ways we're doing this wrong. Because um, yeah, I don't, I don't think we have a, a solution to this yet. Uh, anything else on that topic? All right, Andy, we're out of other topics. OK. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. um, do you mind if I share? Yeah, oh, yeah, sure, sure. Let me, uh, let me stop. Give me a sec. Okay. Um, so 
my topic from the past several meetings is around scoping. Uh, if you are new and uh, missed out on some of the previous calls, the idea here is trying to come up with some proposals to go to upstream Kubernetes to make changes to some of the core code to support what for KCP is logical clusters and workspaces. But um, from an upstream perspective, if we're not necessarily trying to get logical clusters slash workspaces into Kubernetes, then we need some more generic term for it. So um, this document is pretty long and it is a big scratch pad. So um, what I'm interested in is uh, some specific aspects of it. So um, I would love to get some feedback. Uh, offline is totally acceptable. Uh, if you look at the uh, mainly like scoped listers and scoped clients portion uh, of this. So the, the idea here is that a scope represents a subdivision of a cluster. We already have scoping with namespaces. Like they're not officially called scopes, they're called namespaces, but it is a way to subdivide a portion of your cluster and its key space. Um, so the idea behind a scope is that it represents uh, effectively a full cluster, but a single API server can have multiple scopes and they're isolated from each other. So um, if I have a scope A and a scope B, within each of those, there are cluster scoped resources. So naming is a little confusing. And then there's namespace scoped resources. So I can create a CRD in scope A, I can create a CRD in scope B, and if I say, let me go see, let me get a list of all the CRDs, um, you generally would only see them for either scope A or scope B, but not all of them, unless you do um, something where you specifically tell your lister, like, I want to see everything. So um, what I'm looking for feedback on are the proposed API changes in here. Uh, you can see some of the descriptions around what I would do for scoped listers, and then scoped clients. Uh, this is probably something uh, I would imagine folks are maybe a little bit more familiar with if you're used to generated clients. So um, when you look at something like a cluster scoped client set, this is existing code. There's no changes in what I have highlighted here. So you'll have uh, a getter interface where you can call the name of your, your kind and get back uh, an interface for it. And this is um, the interface has all the CRUD methods, create, get, list, update, patch, and so on. Um, so I have a one proposal, which is you we could add a scope method inside the interface. You'd have create, get, list, and scope. And scope would return basically another instance of the same custom resource definition interface, which is scoped to a particular scope, which basically maps out to a logical cluster in, in KCP's world or a workspace. Um, I have a similar description for what we could do with a namespaced uh, And I have a discussion in a comment here with some issues that I have with the current proposed approach. And so please feel free to read that as well. Um, and I am going to add some more scoping for storage for the API server side, but I haven't written that out yet. Um, I also need some help on basically the biggest to do here. How do we justify the need for scopes upstream? Because within a Kubernetes API server, as things exist today, there's just things that the cluster scope and things that are namespace scoped, and there's no reason or there's no need in pure upstream Kubernetes today to necessarily subdivide those. But um, if we can come up with some justifications, I would love it. Uh, love some help there. I do see, Steve, you're asking, could I enforce create a CRD in scope A and create a CR of that in scope B? No, like, can you? Because I was thinking, 
like one of the I'm not sure if you've been running with this, but like the the previous conversation that we had um, for what scopes would be doing in vanilla cube um, was all based on the uh, like sharded controller mm -hmm. subdivided least key space model where different controllers touch different parts of the key space. But I think that only like slightly maps into mm, I see. Yeah, so because th there you get subdivision on list and get, which is useful to drive in reconciliation loops and, and queues. But that but you don't. Yeah, I, I see. That doesn't so like stop you from. You're saying like the scoping would not necessarily map to a logical cluster like we're doing it. It's really just given a full key space. Can we subdivide it? And uh, yeah, I, I don't know like. If you basically say cluster scope is cluster scope, CRDs are cluster scoped, and like I don't know how you would subdivide that into multiple out like my scope, our scope, and not end up with logical clusters like we have them right now. So it, it's it's tricky. I don't think you'd need to. I mean, I, I think like it would be fine even for a cluster scoped object, like if you were doing some sort of like hashing modulus thing to just like break it up into different things that the controller looks at. I just think that the way that we present the scoping concept mm -hmm. may need to be less strict and provide fewer guarantees than the KCP logical cluster concept. I, I, yeah, I understand what you're saying. That makes sense. Um, so the um, couple other things, I do have some branches of Kubernetes and KCP that have an initial prototype of implementing all of this stuff. I am currently in progress uh, or in flight with um, redoing the prototypes as proper commits, because most of the commits in these branches are just whip, because I was in a hurry. Um, so I do have another branch, which I'll link in here as well, that's got um, this in a more logical series of commits. If you're interested in, um, controllers, listers, caches, the key mechanism, the way that indexes work, how the queuing works. There's a lot of good information in here about um, different patterns, uh, the some things that I would like to make singly, globally configurable, but modifiable so that um, we can uh, change what key functions are used, for example. There's a, there's a lot of good information in here. It eventually needs to be uh, edited and organized. So like when you get down to the stuff in the later part of the doc, um, there's a lot in here that is not well organized yet. But um, if you're looking for lots of good tidbits on um, what sort of changes we need to make to hopefully get Kubernetes to accept upstream so that KCP can eventually stop working on a fork. Um, there's lots of info in here. Please take a look if you're interested. I really could uh, could use the help and would appreciate it, at least for the API changes, because um, to do what's in here, I have to go modify the generators. And I would prefer to do that once or twice as opposed to multiple iterations. <laughs> yes, Jason. So the as far as proposing it upstream, why they should want it, uh, all the examples we have are for basically logical clusters for like scoping beyond the scope of a, a cluster. Is there any possible benefit, either performance or UX or features, to scoping it further down? Like, could I use a scope that more efficiently does label selectors or more efficiently does like? only things within this namespace or something like that? Like, is, is there any possible benefit to using the scope, injecting scope to do other stuff that people might want to do in this in the context of a single cluster? Um, so with generated clients and generated listers, you can already get by namespace. So yeah. that's covered. Um, label selectors is an interesting one. You can you can modify a shared informer factory to customize the label selector factory wide, right. um, but that doesn't help with clients. 
And the way that I've approached the code in the prototype, um, and it could change, but you set a, like the scope ends up getting set on a request for a client, for example. And then there's an opportunity for the scope to mutate the request before it's sent over the wire. Hmm. So maybe, um, you know, it, yeah. it would have to manipulate the raw request details. So URL and whatever else. Um, but maybe I could find some ways to broaden that to so that you could make it a more easily constructible like labor label selector scope for example yeah i mean yeah i'm just thinking like we're, we're struggling to find a second use for this that isn't our use uh, mm -hmm. yeah if it was even just a better a a better api for namespace limiting or na you know namespace filtering that could be a possible use, but it doesn't doesn't sound like there's a strong need for that already. People are yeah doing that just like, today. I th I think that the um, the sharded HA controller seems like the clearest path, and I guess one benefit of this approach would be that you have that hook on the request, and you can make sure that whatever you're doing doesn't change. Like the ownership or like which shard that object lands in, which might be a useful property. Yeah, I, I think it would be an interesting exercise to explore what it would look like to do KCP logical clusters as scopes combined with a controller where you want to shard, you know, where you want to bucket things. Um, because if we, like either support logical clusters or we support HA sharded controllers, but we can't blend them together somehow, then I think that we we have a weaker argument or it'll be harder for us, for example. Anyways, um, we're almost out of time. So I'm going to stop presenting. Uh, I've made my pitch. So please be thinking about this and um, if you have any questions or want to help out, just reach out. Have we also, I mean, uh, have you, Andy, or as Clayton or anyone else, uh, like, started discussing this with anyone upstream at all? Like, I haven't. I, they might I, also see it and be like, "Oh, I would. I know exactly what I would use this for. It's this or something." You know. Yeah, I, I should probably go chat with Jordan and David uh, Eads and at least start with those folks and see if this just falls flat or they um, could envision some uses for it. Yeah, it would also be a useful time saver if they were like, no, this is absolutely never going to happen. You know, True. go back to the, go back to square one or whatever, but yeah. Um, cool, I guess if there's nothing else, we can end a few minutes early. Paul, what's up? Paperwork time, you know it's me. Um, <laughs> if you haven't had a chance to look at the, the demo tasks, um, please do take a look at the ones that your names are beside in our work packages document and create the uh, GitHub issues that you need to. Just assign the prototype three milestone to them and they should show up in our view. And if you don't have permission to assign the milestone, just let somebody know. Um, like I can do it, uh, other folks on the call can do it as well. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Have a good week. We'll see you on the internet. See ya. See ya.